So previously, we've defined the trigonometric functions based off of acute right triangles. Okay, And then we learned how to find them based off of a point that they defined in the plane. But what we really need is a way to define the trigonometric functions for any angle possible. Okay, So the way we're going to do this is we're going to look at a very special circle whose center is the origin. And this circle is called the unit circle. Unit is a fancy way of saying one because the radius of this circle is always going to be one. And that's going to simplify our calculations considerably. Now, what we're going to do to be able to find the unit circle of any number, okay, is we're always going to start at the positive x-axis, just like we do for any angle. And we're going to use something called a wrapping function. And what a wrapping function does is it takes the real number line, okay, with zero in the middle, and it literally is going to wrap it around the outside of the unit circle. So this point will go to here, okay, and then the positive numbers are going to wrap this way around the circle. The negative numbers are going to wrap this way around the circle, the zero in the middle, and they'll keep on wrapping around each way so that every point on the real number line corresponds to a point on the unit circle. Okay. Now, once you have a point on the unit circle, okay, defined by wherever it fell on the real number line, we're going to draw the radius connecting that point to the center of the circle. Because it's the unit circle, that will always have length 1. Then we're going to drop a straight line down to the x-axis and form it into our triangle. Okay. Now, the length of this side of the triangle is x and the length of this side is y. And of course I'm using the words length and triangle in an unusual manner because these can be negative numbers. They are simply the coordinates of this point. Okay. Now, before we actually get to the trigonometric functions, one thing to realize is because we were wrapping the real number line around and around and around and around, and it didn't actually matter how many times we wrapped around, it only mattered where you ended up. It is a fact that all of the trigonometric functions are something called periodic. And periodic means that they repeat over and over and over again. In our case, they typically repeat with a period of 2 pi or 360 degrees. Because 2 pi means wrap around the circle once, same with 360 degrees. So the trigonometric functions will repeat every time you go around the circle once. It will start repeating over again. Okay. which is why we often only look at numbers between 0 and 2 pi or 0 and 360 degrees. Okay. Now, from here, we're going to define our trigonometric functions based off the unit circle, which, as you remember, has that hypotenuse always equal to 1. So the sine of our angle is opposite over hypotenuse, but y over 1 is just y. And the cosine of our angle is adjacent over hypotenuse, but x over 1 is just x. This means that the coordinates of this point on the unit circle are the cosine and the sine of the angle. This brings up warning number 28. Don't confuse which is x and which is y, because we tend to want sine to be first, but it's actually cosine comma sine. And this way, when we learn the unit circle, we simply have to learn the x and y coordinates of every point, and that gives us cosine and sine. Once we know those, we can get tangent. Once we know all three of those, we can get the reciprocals for the other three trigonometric functions. Okay. Now, the domain and range of the trigonometric functions are then going to be based on these definitions off the circle. Okay, so we're going to set up a little table our six trigonometric functions and we're going to want their domain and their range. Okay, And we're going to get these solely based off of the circle. So for sine, because we wrapped the entire real number line around this circle, 
we could put in any real number for sine. So the domain of sine is everything, and similarly for cosine, because we wrapped the entire circle around it. Okay. Now their range, well, sine is the y-coordinates. The first y-coordinate that appears anywhere on this circle is the lowest point, the negative one, and the furthest we get up is to the highest point, the positive one. So the range is negative 1 to 1 because those are the y-coordinates that appear on the circle. Similarly, cosine is x-coordinates, and we go from negative 1 to 1 as x-coordinates as well. So these are the ranges for sine and cosine. Now the other, six, or the other four of the six are based on these two. Tangent is sine divided by cosine. And that is defined as long as we aren't breaking the one rule in math we never break, which is division by zero. So tangent will be defined everywhere that cosine is not zero, okay? And that's gonna look a little bit unusual because cosine is zero often because it's periodic. So cosine or the X coordinate is zero every time we hit one of these two places on the circle. Pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, and continuing. You notice all of those points were an odd number times pi over 2. Okay, so tangent is defined as long as it's not an odd number times pi over 2. Now, the range for tangent is actually everything because we get all possible numbers here. Okay, tangent actually looks something like the slope of these points, okay? Um, the slope of the radius connecting the point to the center. And as we go through, we get all possible slopes. Now, once we have these, we just have to get the reciprocal functions. Okay, cosecant, which is one over sine, will be defined as long as sine is not zero which is as long as the y-coordinate is not zero. And the y-coordinate is zero at zero, pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, so forth. So cosecant is defined as long as it's not a multiple of pi, okay? And secant will be defined as long as cosine is not zero, which was the same restriction we had for tangent. And cotangent, will be defined as long as sine is not zero, which is the same restriction we had for cosecant. Now, their ranges. Cotangent and tangent are both defined everywhere, or have a range of everything, excuse me. Cosecant and secant are respectively one over sine and cosine. So I take a small number between negative one and one, I look at its reciprocal, and I'm gonna get a big number. So their ranges, are everything except for the interval negative one to one. So they're either less than negative one or bigger than positive one, with you allowing to have the points negative one and one respectively.